What is up you guys, Pete DiCarlo here, and today I'm gonna share my one trick that changed my life completely, and that is finding a mentor. Let's get into it. So for those of you who have not read the book Mastery by Robert Greene, there is an amazing chapter in there about mentors and mentorships. And one of the biggest problems that I see from a lot of people in my life, and it happened to me personally, is that they are taking advice from people that they shouldn't. So now about 10 years ago, when I really wanted to reshape my life, I was left with knowing that I didn't want to work a normal nine to five, and I wasn't really fit to be in a classroom. So at this pivotal time in my life, I thought that it was important to talk to the people that I held dear to my heart. Like, my friends, my family, and my parents. And honestly, most of them at the time said, you should really go back to school because you need an education. You really shouldn't try to start a business because most businesses fail. And you shouldn't start trading stocks because 95% of stock traders fail. What I very soon realized is that who you take advice from is extremely important because you're not gonna get rich from taking advice from a poor person. And the worst aspect of all this is that usually the people who want to give you advice are people who care about you most. And most of the time, those people are the people that you hold closest to your heart. And it's hard to not take advice from your parents or your friends when you don't wanna be like them. In my position, most of my friends were broke and poor and I didn't want to be anything like them. Now, that doesn't mean that I didn't love them or that I didn't want to be around them. It just meant that I don't want to take advice from them. I have honestly had the closest people in my life almost ruin me just by giving me bad advice. And if I would have listened to them back then, my life would be completely different right now. And so I want to ask you, would you take diet and fitness advice from somebody who's 40 pounds overweight? Would you take dental advice or go see a dentist who had wooden teeth? Would you go to a financial advisor who was living out of his car? Of course you wouldn't. Whenever you take advice from somebody, ask yourself this question. Are they qualified? And qualifications might be different for you. They don't have to have a college degree. They could just have the experience. In my case, I'm not a millionaire. So if you want to learn from me how to make a million dollars tomorrow, like that's not going to happen. But if you want to see somebody who's living the real world experiences that you want to live, or maybe you just want to not work a nine to five that you absolutely hate, then you can come to me. And if you don't have anybody in your life that you can get good advice from or someone to go to, then just listen to your gut instinct. A mentor of mine, Dan Locke, always says that when you take advice from somebody, you are taking their life. And I know that that might sound too deep, but it's true. Like, would you want to take the life of your mother or your brother or your sister or anybody who's giving you advice? If you're taking advice from somebody who is overweight, broke, and has no ambition, do you want that person's life? Do you want to be like that person? That's something to think about. You could always take somebody's advice into consideration, but always take it with a grain of salt. This is the one thing that changed my life personally and financially, and that is finding a mentor. And in this video, I wanna give you some steps that you can take to find, build, and grow your mentorship. The first way to find a mentor or just get help from anybody is to always give before you receive. Like I said, this goes for almost anything, but what you have to remember is that most mentors and people that you are seeking out don't need you. In this case, these people are where you want to be in the future, and they probably already have a successful team around them. Never go to these people with a hidden agenda. Think about it. If you're the biggest real estate developer in Philadelphia, how many people do you think just come to you every single day, every single week, asking for a handout, asking for a favor? You want to be different and you want to stand out. So reach out to them and show them what you can offer them. In turn, this will make this person trust you more, and eventually, when you're with them, give you more responsibility. The second step to finding a mentor is to just not pick anybody. With finding a mentor, you don't want to take the shotgun approach and just find anybody on LinkedIn or in your area and just blast out emails to everybody asking if you can work with them. When finding a mentor, you want to find somebody that you respect and resonate with. Just because they are where you want to be financially doesn't mean that they need to be your mentor. There needs to be more than just a business or a financial connection. There needs to be a human connection. Do your guys' morals align? Maybe this person is where you wanna be in five or six years, but he or she is a terrible person. They treat their clients and their employees terrible. They're disrespectful. That's not somebody that you wanna learn from. There are so many people in this world who can be your mentor and can teach you the things that you wanna learn. So make sure you pick somebody that you resonate with. Step number three is to remember to always respect 
people's time and space. Never just barge into somebody's office and demand to work for them or beg and tell them that you'll do anything to work with them. This is one of the biggest things that just pisses me off as an individual. Whether you're my friend, a family member, or a client, if you disrespect my time and my space, you're dead to me. Because people that you want to mentor you don't have a lot of time and their space is so highly regarded to them and the people around them that if you disrespect it, you're the last person that they want to work with. This also goes with being too timid and not wanting to reach out to people. I see so many people afraid to approach successful people, whether it's through emails or phone calls or even at a seminar or something. What you got to understand is that a lot of these people that you want to be mentored by actually enjoy helping people. If you look at people like Gary Vee, he stops for so many pictures, answers so many questions, and it's just such a an all around good guy and wants to see other people succeed. And as far as reaching out to somebody online, don't just go to LinkedIn or Instagram and message them like, yo, if you want a mentorship from somebody, what I advise you to do is get their email, write out a clear and concise email to them explaining your strengths and how you think that you could help them. Maybe schedule a time to meet them in a local coffee shop or take them out to lunch. Or if they're from far away and they're doing a seminar in your area, see if maybe you can meet up with them for a couple minutes there. If you respect their time in their space, in turn, they will respect yours and give you the time that you're asking for. And now before we go on to the next tip, make sure you hit like, comment, and subscribe down below. It helps the algorithm and helps these videos get shared. Step number four is to go all in. When you finally find this person that you want to be mentored by, you have to go all in. You have to show your commitment. If that means working for six, 10, 12 months for free to show that you're dedicated, do it. Don't just think of this as some job that you'll be at for a couple years or that you're gonna go to this company and work with this person and just consume everything they have and leave. In martial arts, you have the sensei, which in this case is your mentor, and you are the student. You don't just go to a jujitsu academy for two or three years, learn everything from the black belts there, and then leave. You stay with them and you are committed with that gym and with that trainer. You represent your sensei for the rest of your life. And you should think of mentorships the same way. They are your sensei and you represent a piece of them for the rest of your life. So show you're committed and go all in. And the fifth and the final step is for the people who cannot find anyone in their area. Maybe they've been turned down by all the people that they think are the right fit and that is to search for mentors online. And one of the best ways to do that, obviously, is YouTube. When I first started out, I didn't know who to contact. I didn't know anybody in my area. I didn't know an industry that I wanted to be a part of. And so I turned to YouTube. Find somebody you resonate with, consume all their content, go to their seminars, do their webinars, become part of their master classes, and even work with their community or sign up for a mentorship program that some of them even have. I can't stress the importance of a mentorship. And at the very least, a bonus tip is to learn from anti-mentors. Find the people in your life that you don't ever want to be like. Watch what they do on a daily basis. What time they wake up. What food they put in their body. Do they work out? How is their mental state? Are they optimistic overall or pessimistic? Find out what these people do and do the opposite. I want to thank you guys for watching till the end. Make sure you hit like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to be putting out a lot of content in 2020 and we have almost 550 followers. This channel means a lot to me, you guys, and I can't believe that we're growing at such a high pace. I want to thank you guys for watching. Until next time, I'll see you.